Hi guys, in this video I want to show you how the low s function works very uh, briefly and should plot um, a uh, low s curve on a two-dimensional scatter plot. So let's start with some data. In fact, I'm going to use uh, data that comes uh, prepackaged with um, you, your standard R download. <coughs> and it's the cars data set so let's take a look at cars we see we have two variables both of them are numerical so we have bivariate numerical data that we can make a nice scatter plot with and on top of that we have 50 observations so we should end up with 50 uh, points on our scatter plot so it gives us a, a, a decent um, example to work with so first off let me just make a very basic plot here so we're going to go speed on the y-axis, distance on the x. Okay, and you could have done that like this as well. <laughs> and you end up with the same plot. Okay. So we're looking at this plot, we clearly see that there's some sort of positive relationship between these two variables. I would argue it is uh, almost linear, um, somewhat perhaps curved, okay? Um, not, not too much going on as far as waving. Remember, if you're trying to fit some kind of simple linear regression model here, you don't want to overfit the points, so you want to be able to summarize these points as simply as possible perhaps a straight line would do here okay but uh, typically in our exploratory data analysis phase before we apply a, a simple linear regression model to data it's nice to have um, some kind of non-parametric estimation of the relationship between the points um, and of course the scatter plot is very useful and informative but it would be nice to also plot some kind of non-parametric curve here. So the low S curve is a great um, tool at this point. So <clears throat> the low S curve uh, has a very complicated algorithm, but it pretty much sums up to um, trying to uh, look locally, for example, by locally we mean in a local region, this is just arbitrary explanation, um, look in the local region and based on that local region get some kind of smoothed value or you could think of averaged value for the, the, the points in that region so maybe this would be the average so we're taking slices like this of the um, x-axis and at each slice we're going to do some kind of um, averaging or smoothing and these slices can be of varying widths depending on the number of data points and so you end up with some kind of smoothed value and then those values are connected and we have a nice we get a nice curve okay and there's m many curves we can end up with using the low s function functionality um, in R and that depends on some of the settings okay so we'll First, let's go with the default. So if we just use low S, we need to specify the Y variable and the X variable. In this case, speed was our Y, so let's stay consistent. And if I just leave it like this, um, uh, uh, the low S function uses the default settings and it gives us the X values and Y values uh, that the low s function computed. The x's correspond to the x's in my original data set. So these are the, actually the distances uh, that I had, the 50 distances sorted. Okay. The y's, however, are computed using this fun this algorithm, the low s algorithm. Okay. Um, so the y values are what's computed by this function. Okay, whereas the x values are the x values from the um, data 
itself. Okay, so uh, another thing to mention here is that the default value there is a um, uh, an argument in the lowest function which we didn't define, and so it left it as a default value. F. <clears throat> what F is is the smoothing factor. So here's the actual um, definition from the uh, function literature. It's the smoother span. This gives the proportion of points in the plot which influence the smooth at each value. <clears throat> uh, so larger values give more smoothness. So it's a proportion. Okay, so it's something that ranges between 0 and 1. By default, f is 66% or 2 thirds. Um, so that's the f that was used to compute these. So the, the idea here, and it, which was um, mentioned here, larger values, so closer to 1, give you more smooth line. Okay, so <clears throat> when we decide what f to use, we should always consider um, the, the kind of struggle between overfitting and underfitting. So two-thirds seems like a nice default to, to start with. Okay, so when we hit low S and we don't define F, it's actually set to two-thirds. If I hit enter, you'll see we get the same values as we did above. Just take note of one of these guys and let's check 25.05. Yes. Okay, but I can change F. I can make it as large as 1. So you see these values change slightly. Or I can make it as small as I would say, realistically, let's say 0 0.01 something like this and you see I get a much more um, much different set of values okay but it's um, much more interesting to not to use low s in conjunction with the lines function and actually get these points these X's and Y's plotted here on the on the curve so let's do that and let's start with the default two-thirds f equals two-thirds so again our X our Y sorry <clears throat> tilde rx and now let me explicitly define two-thirds even though that that is the default okay and I forgot to um, start the low s function so you see I have low s within lines so lines is gonna convert what I those values that I got in the previous clip to actual points on this curve connected by a line. Okay, so let's hit enter. Actually, let's make the color something interesting. Let's go with red. Okay, and here we go. So that that's the plot of those points that we were just looking at. Um, the output from the low s function. Okay, so we see this is kind of like how we expected these point. How we felt like these points were going. They kind of. Um, almost linear but a little bit uh, kind of decelerating if you will um, concave down all right especially towards the higher end all right let's play with the f value let's make it larger so two-thirds let's go with something a little uh, larger maybe 0.9 and let's make this a different color so you can also define colors with numbers here let's go with three so you see we get the green line here is slightly different than the red line here. So arguably not much difference, right? Uh, we could even go higher, see if there's any. Yeah, so not much difference there. Let's go very low and let's see what we get. And you see when I go very low, f.01, that's smooth and constant, very low smoothing span you see I get an overfit curve in fact one that seems to be doing very little abstraction at all uh, um, seems to almost be tracing the points although some are, are, are not touched um, so this is definitely would be um, falling into the category of overfitting something um, and on the other end we saw that uh, 
we were getting a very abstracted curve which was catching the um, essence of the flow or the pattern of these points and f.01 was is really capturing a lot of noise uh, in the data okay so this is how the low s function works my recommendation is to use a couple different values for f plot them at different colors and um, see uh, what kind of uh, relationship uh, the curve reveals to you whether it uh, agrees or reinforces what you originally expected looking at the points or whether it kind of opens up new insights to uh, different possibilities in the um, scatter plot. Uh, this is typically used in the exploratory data analysis phase, uh, especially useful in simple linear regression, multiple regression, and so forth. So hopefully this was helpful. Um, to make sure to watch, um, watch my other R tutorial videos on my channel. Subscribe, like, share. Until next time, have a great day.